All right, you guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video and to another edition of the top 10 greatest New Zealand All Blacks of all time. Today's video is about a man named Wayne Shelford. Wayne Buck Shelford, as he was more commonly known. Wayne Shelford was born 13th of December 1957 in Rotorua, New Zealand. He was listed at 189 centimetres tall or six foot two and a half. 107 kgs, 235 pounds, and was All Black number 860. Wayne Buck Shelford played at the number 8 position, which, which is at the back of a scrum. The number 8, in fact all loose forwards need to be a hybrid of a forward and a back. They need to be mobile, they need to have skill, they need to be big enough, powerful enough, they need to be able to tackle. And he could most probably kick too, but he played before my time. I didn't actually get to see him play, unfortunately. Wayne Shelford's All Blacks career began in 1986. Um, it continued into 1987 when the inaugural Rugby World Cup was on. New Zealand actually won that tournament, and Buck Shelford was a massive part of that. This series I've brought out in, you know, coinciding with the 2019 Rugby World Cup, which has just started last week. And so I really hope you're enjoying this series. And if you do want to see some of the current All Blacks play, you most likely can within this tournament. I don't know when this video is going to come out, but the final of the 2019 Rugby World Cup will be played on the 2nd of November, 2019. Now, Wayne Shelford became All Blacks captain throughout his, early into his All Blacks career actually. In total, he played 48 games for the All Blacks including 22 test matches. So back before the professional era of rugby came along, a lot of matches that the All Blacks played were not actually considered test matches, which is international, you know, proper games that are recorded. They may have been exhibition matches, they may have been against lesser nations that didn't actually have a, uh, you know, a, um, a recognised international team. Could have been anything. Of those 48 games, 22 were test matches. He also scored 22 tries in total of those 48 total matches. So 22 tries as a forward in 48 matches is nothing to be scoffed at. That's actually an amazing strike rate. So Wayne Shelford, I never got to see him play, but I'll tell you what, he was, he could probably play today. You know, that's the kind of skill, the kind of skill set um, that he brought into the team. Now, there are two main things, two things that will go down in, in folklore about this man. Okay, number one is the fact that he had an incident in 1987 against France. Sorry, 1986. One of his, first, I think it was his second second test ever against France. We had an incident that happened on the field that will always give him uh, the reputation of being one of the toughest motherfuckers to ever play the game. Secondly, and almost just as importantly, well, actually a lot more importantly, um, was the fact that when Wayne Shelford came into the team, at the time, there hadn't been a huge Māori influence on the game. The New Zealanders had always done the traditional war dance before each match called the haka, but before Wayne Shelford came into the team, it was very, very white, should we say. It wasn't done properly. It was not done properly, and it was actually an embarrassment. So Wayne Shelford came into the team and he thought that, you know, it needed revamping. He thought, there's no way I'm going to come in here as a proud Māori man and do a haka like this. So what he did, he actually took the team to go and see a, uh, a high school performance or a school performance of some Māori students doing the haka. And that is the grounds of the haka that you see today. That is what sort of changed the way that New Zealand saw the haka and the way that they performed it. But with that being said, I am going to read word for word these two stories, these two storylines, because they are definitely worth hearing. Okay, so the first one, <laughs> the first one comes from the uh, the story that that created his reputation as being one of the hardest guys in the in, in the uh, the game of rugby. Okay, 1986 set the scene, second test ever against France. Okay, roughly 20 minutes into the match. He was caught at the bottom of a rather aggressive ruck, and an errant French boot found its way into Shelford's groin, somehow ripping his scrotum and leaving one testicle hanging free. 
He also lost four teeth in the process. Incredibly, after discovering the injury to his scrotum, he calmly asked the physio to stitch up the tear and return to the field before a blow to his head left him concussed. He was substituted and watched the remainder of the game from the grandstand, where he witnessed the All Blacks lose 16-3. To, to this day, Shelford has no memory of the game. Okay, so he had his, his scrotum ripped open, his testicle was hanging out. <laughs> he ran to the side of the field, got the physio to stitch it up, went back on the field, still didn't win, got knocked to the head, had to come off anyway, and, uh, and, and still has no recollection, recollection of the game. Now, after me looking into the world of American football recently, there is one incident that is very similar to that, but not as, not as hardcore, no way. There was a guy, Ronnie Lott, he had his finger crushed in an incident on the field. He went off. They said, no, your finger's stuffed. He said, right, take it off, and I'm going, to back, I'm, I'm going back on the field. So he literally had part of his finger amputated just so he could get back on the field. Now, I don't know which injury is going to be worse. You guys make up your own mind. But that was the story about Buck Wayne Shelford. In his second test ever, okay, this guy went on to captain the All Blacks after that, and I'm not surprised. The second thing that I was going to mention was the uh, the Haka. Okay, so upon becoming captain in 1987, which he also did not lose a game as, the All Blacks went from 1987 to 1990 without losing one game, and Buck Shelford was the captain throughout the entire reign. Okay, upon becoming captain, Shelford brought his teammates to Te, te, Oti, te Oti College, a Māori school, to see the students perform a traditional haka. And thank God, thank God he did, seriously, thank God. Although the All Blacks had been performing the haka at the start of their matches since the team's inception, it was Shelford who taught them the proper way to perform the kamate haka. And, uh, you know, the haka is, is something that, it doesn't matter where I am, doesn't matter who I'm watching it with, when I hear it or see it, it gives me chills, and I am such a proud New Zealander, and every time I watch the game of rugby, every time I watch a game of All Blacks rugby, the haka is, is almost certainly going to be my favourite part. After retiring from the All Blacks, well he actually didn't retire, he got dropped, and the whole nation went up in arms about it in 1990, but after retiring, the year after, he was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire for services to rugby which would now be called a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit. Shelford moved to England after that to play for Northampton. Um, he finally retired from all rugby in 1985, uh, 1995 and coached for some time in Britain, including spells at the Saracens and Lions. He returned to New Zealand, was the assistant coach of the North Harbour team in 97 and 98, and he's currently coaching in some way, shape or form, at his former club, North Shore, in Devonport. So, that was a little bit about Wayne Buck Shelford. This video is about chronicling his, uh, his career, his short career on the All Blacks jumper, but very, 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 very effective career. And uh, the video excerpts you're going to see after this part of me talking is from this DVD right here, called The Legends of All Blacks Rugby. Is he on the front? No, he's not. He's on the back. If you can see him there, I don't know if you can see that, but that is Wayne Buck Shelford. So with all that being said, I say sit back, relax, enjoy. Enjoy those two stories. They will go down in, in rugby folklore. And uh, I've got to say, you know, Wayne Buck Shelford, I wish I was alive to see you play. Um, I think you would have affected me in some kind of way as a young kid, and you probably did that to a whole generation of kids coming through. And so I want to say thank you for your services to rugby, and good night. Peace out, everybody. Wayne Buck Shelford made his test debut for the All Blacks in an infamous series against France. His almost reckless bravery in those games ensured that Shelford became a byword for courage and commitment to the cause. In the 1987 World Cup, Shelford played in five of the six All Black games, scoring twice against the Welsh. So here's David Kirk, the All Black skipper. 
All Blacks awesome power, Shelford. Can they keep him out? He's made it. Again, New Zealand drive on, go for the second pushover. Shelford is easy as that. Shelford took over as captain of the All Blacks immediately after the 1987 World Cup. During his captaincy, from 1987 to 1990, the All Blacks were undefeated. In 1990, when the selectors decided to leave him out of the team, Shelford had played in 48 All Black games, including 22 tests, and had scored a total of 22 tries. Can Ireland keep it to that until the end? Smith's throw, knocked down by Pierce, bash up to Fox, the feed in there to Ennis. And it's coming through like an express train. That was Mike Brewer on there. The drive over by Shelford. The try is given. The New Zealand captain has scored it. Sandy McNeil was very well positioned. And it's the giant man from North Harbour who has finally clinched the match. 21 points to 6 New Zealand lead. Murray Pierce was the man who won the ball. Bishop had a little second go at it, and then watch how Innes came in here, like a runaway train from the right wing. He made a lot of ground, was caught there by Mannion, then it was taken on further by Brewer, and there was the big 16 and a half stone number eight. A good try. So I take that, ask them now what's say that I've been going to the top and I got but they not so I know that they hate that uh, But I'm on now